Good morning and welcome to Tech Talk. Uh, it's been since April 21st since we've done this, so a lot has changed. We've had a lot of movement. A lot of change. Let's start. A lot of volatility. Uh, we're going to start today with Class 3, uh, the Q3 pack, July to September. And we've got that up here, Andy. Let's look at uh, July to September, Class 3. What are we looking at? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we had, we talked last time, we kind of were able to get out of this hole where we were trying to break into a new low. And then, you know, what really sticks out to me about this chart now is that little gap right there. It's between 1680 and 1690, and it formed a couple of days ago when we opened about 10, 15 points higher across that pack. And now you start to kind of level off a little bit on this on this price action, and, you know, conversely, you start to run a little bit of uh, resistance in the cheese market. So the question is, are we going to step back and test this pack again? Um, I think it's certainly possible. I, I think if it does... You know, it still runs into the support right here, mm -hmm. but I just I think you need to be a little bit careful here about getting extra long, just because you know this gap. Again, we tend to fill gaps when we start to run out of uh, when we start to level out or start to consolidate a little bit. I see. I, I think that's a really good point. I think you've got you know that gap level there actually coincides with a lot of price action in the history, mm -hmm. indication of wanting to visit that again. Right. And this area here of peaking, 1740, 1750. You're seeing zones of of action there of that would tell us you could right. potentially back exactly. off there. For good. Sure. Okay, so I think this pack's just going to have a lot of volatility here for the next couple of days. All right. Very good. Next, we'll take a look at the uh, cheese average. Cheese average, and this one is the block plus the barrel divided by two. We just take the the general average of it. And so, Back up. yeah. Before we start, I I drew this trend line here before we started this this pink line right here, and what mm -hmm. it is, it, it, it is. It's been resistance here. It's been resistance since what is this? This is about early November when we touched. We touched 190 and have since seen consistent resistance up against this spot. We saw it here. We're seeing it again potentially here. That's at a dollar 65, or excuse me, a dollar 60 and a half. Um, what sticks out to me about this is that after all this consolidation, we managed to kind of break out here and are starting to run into a lot of volume. Volume is typically a good indication of price direction. Um, you know, if I had to say anything about this pack, or this average, I should say, I mean, I think this, if we can break out and start trading up into here and get through this, this pink line that we drew here, you're breaking what has been long-term resistance. I think that's a very bullish indicator. Okay, so you're saying watch out for watch out for the breakout of this here. You start Correct. seeing closes through here, and Correct. you think we could extend higher. Correct. And, and you hit the nail on the head too. You want to see multiple closes. Got it. All right. So that's the CME block barrel average. Yep. This is cash. There. That's cash. All right. Next, we're going to go to the not fat dry milk. So I think we're doing uh, July to these. July to these pack. Yep. July to these. Um, big day yesterday. No two ways about it. Um, you had, you know, we had all this consolidation here, and you, I think we actually talked about this part last time, where we tried to kind of touch into this lower area here, mm -hmm. failed to do so, and have since very steadily built a nice base and consolidated out, and now we've more or less, I mean, I call that a breakout. You had this area that was more or less resistance. Sorry, I couldn't get a straight line, but mm -hmm. you, know, you clearly broke out and Should closed well above there. Should I get a ruler? Get a ruler out there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and you have all this all this space here where we can continue to move. Um, you know, cash has been something that's been on the move as well. But I look at that pack yesterday's close. If you can hold that close and, and maybe stay and trade at least in this area for the next couple of days, I think the next step would be to move there Got just it. based off that chart. Uh, just really quick, clear that off for one second. You've got you like a, my line. You got a gap. I do. You got a gap right there. Mm -hmm. You like to talk about the gaps. Mm -hmm. And I would say this candle here pretty dominant at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big, uh, that's an indication of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, we closed above that area and really plowed through there. Yeah, I mean, any anybody that, uh, any new shorts that have been in the market since, I mean, late Feb, early March, are now, you know, underwater, so to speak. Any, so between that gap at roughly 102-ish, mm -hmm. you see any major resistance between here and there? I really or you think we're? I really don't. I think it could potentially be a straight shot there in the next couple of days, and then maybe consolidate from there. Great. Anything else on that one? Or next, we've got uh, butter. This is an oh, interesting man. one. July to dees. <laughs> this is July to dees butter. I, I don't really know what to say about this. This thing's just been on a tear. Here, I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit before we do that. 
Uh, I mean, the one thing that sticks out to me the most about this is one, two, three, that one's huge, four gaps. Um, we've seen this type of activity before. Uh, we've seen multiple trips to $3 in cash. And it, the times that we did do that, we did see futures activity like this, where you mm -hmm. put in multiple gaps, and it just kind of, the, the question was, where were we going to stop? So the chart's not telling us where we're going to stop, but I think what it's telling us is that when we break, it's going to it's going to break pretty hard. And it's going to look to, I think, fill these gaps pretty aggressively. Um, that may not be, I don't know when that is, but I think that's what you're going to end up seeing, is just, you know, it, when it rains, it pours, so to speak. What do you even do when, when a chart goes like this? Do you kind of get out of the way? I would just stay out of the way. That's not... I think, uh, it, it, to me, it, you know, owning, or even trying to get short this, I mean, you don't know, could, we could put in three or four more gaps like this and be trading 265. I mean, right now, that's about 248, just shy of 250. Mm -hmm. The way it's been trading, you could easily argue you could be trading 265 within the next couple of days if we have more gaps like this. But again, I look at this and say, then these number of gaps, it's an unsustainable price move, and if we do start to fall apart, I think there's going to look to really quickly fill these gaps, and I think you have to be really cognizant of those. There's no consolidation there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the EEX, <laughs> European Energy Exchange. This is the, their skim milk powder, and mm -hmm. it's Q3, July to Sep. Mm -hmm. What are we? What are we seeing here? Uh, to me, this looks a lot like uh, the. I think it was a class four June that we looked at. I think it was the last time or the time before where you had a pretty extensive break. Um, clearly in control on the bears there. And then, you know, if we had a perfect trend line drawn, you, you're basically kind of breaking it right in that area. And then you're finding some good consolidation to where you're not testing that low that was made in mid-March. It reminds me a lot of class four. It reminds me of non-fat. Um, this is a pack that, I mean, I don't really, I know where there's, uh, I mean, that bar, I don't really want to know what to say about those two bars right there. But I think in general, this, this overall move like this, is something that can continue on, and I think if you drew a retracement level, you know, you're going to start to see 30% retracement, 50% retracement. I mean, this looks like a pack that wants to start trading back in the 2000 plus. From top to bottom. So Correct. let's do that really quick. You look at, I think it's, yeah, there you go. Up there, down here, yep. you're talking okay. about. Yeah, 2000 plus. You're talking about hitting these levels, right? Yep. Okay. And I think it's, it's going to be more of a solid move if you have more days okay. and time. Oh, sorry. Oops, pen that thing. There we go. If you have more days like that, where you have consolidation and then you know some an uptick and then more consolidation and then an uptick, um, it's kind of the opposite of the butter market right now. Right, right. I think the one thing to say about you know these candles right here, mm -hmm. they've got a different kind of a settlement process there. So it's not like we actually. Uh, traded down at these lows. It's okay. not like it traded higher and then settled lower. They've got a weird settlement process there, or a different one that makes for unique looking candles sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, we're good. Cool. Andy, thank you so much.